uh, napping or sleeping is really a nice experience, right? Especially if we are pre practicing how to to sleep, no? <laughs> Forever, right? Well, but uh, we have to continue on with our program. We'll, uh, he will be presenting for around 40 minutes. And around five minutes, he'll be giving you the questions for you to, uh, to ask, if ever. And then after that, uh, the next part of the program will continue. We, we need to, to uh, stick with the program that we have. And we will just limit the questions. Uh, although we want to open up the questions, and yet there are still uh, two, uh, two presenters after Pastor Javier. By the way, Pastor Javier is teaching here in this university. Okay, he came from South Philippine Adventist College and he was called to serve here uh, two years ago. Tama pa ba, sir? Three. Uh, three years ago, he was called to teach here and his major is uh, his, uh, systematic theology. Dr. Javier is, uh, has a vast experience in this kind of endeavor. I hope this afternoon we'll lend our ears after which you can ask questions pertinent to the to, the, to his presentation this afternoon. Pastor Javier, it's your time. Thank you, Pastor Tuting. Uh, this presentation I entitled that The Challenging Work in the Cities and the Wealthy. Uh, this is a very challenging work. I was still young in the ministry where I challenged to uh, a mission president that I said, Elder, do not give me gold for baptism. Just give me a racket and BHS because BHS was the popular media at the time. Because I was studying really that it seems that the rich were neglected. However, I took also to one treasury in the union Three of them did not really respond. Says, he said, you know, Pastor Habien, God will get angry if we only think of wealthy people in evangelism. Mm -hmm. So I keep quiet. So here, the first part is the challenging work of God in the cities, and you know most of this quotation. The second part is, I have researched a 25 pages, single space, the early, the socio-economic profile of early Christianity, which I'm going to present in Thailand next year. Uh, because I look at the New Testament, whether we follow, and I found out this was different. But let, first, let's go to Ellen White. She said, when I think of cities in which so little has been done, it is true until today, right? in which there are so many thousands to be warned of the soon coming of the Savior. I feel the intensity of the desire to see men and women going forth to work in the power of spirit filled with Christ's love for the perishing. Take note of the two things, the power of the Holy Spirit and the love, and it is all repleted in the book of Acts. When we don't have the love of Christ, then we don't have the power, really. We cannot. We all need to be wide awake. That, as the way opens, we may advance the work of the large cities. We are far behind in following the light to enter the cities and erect the memorials for God. This is what Ellen White said long time ago, and we know already a lot of dissertation had been done but the implementation is very slow, okay? There is now tied up that should be used for the unworked cities in Europe, Australia, and America, and the region beyond. These cities had been neglected for years. The angels of God are waiting for us to give our labors for their inhabitants. The warning message is to be proclaimed, not with outward display, but in the power of the Spirit by men of faith. Again, here is the, among the many quotations from Ellen White. She said, I said that's why I, I look at that. 
listen to what Ellen White said. There should be no delay in this well-planned effort to educate the church members. Persons should be chosen to labor in the large cities who are fully cons consecrated and who understand the sacredness and the importance of the work. Do not send those who are not qualified in this respect. You know, I talked to several administrators and they told me, you know, Dr. Habian, the problem is that my belief is that whatever, wherever you come from, so long as we called you and put you there, God will bless you. I said, Elder, the way I understand is the opposite. It's really opposite. Look at this Ellen White. Ellen White said, do not sin. If you are not gifted of reaching cities, put them in the places where they are productive and put those men that they know really how to reach the, the wealthy. Meaning to say, uh, you know, I was told by my, he said, Pastor Javier, you know, so be, uh, because I told him, Elder, I want to work. He said, your peers will get angry with you. Why? You work with no goals and they are working. I said, Elder, in five years, your goal of baptism is 3,000. How much is the tithes they are going to generate? I said, give me just two years. I'll get two millionaires or three, and your tithes of 3,000 will compare. I show him my data. And he was not convinced. I said, I need to rebaptize my, my president. He is not convinced. You listen to that. Okay? Do not sin. Men are needed who will post the triumph of the cross, who will pre persevere under discouragement and privation, who will have the seal and resolution and faith that are indispensable to the missionary field. Meaning to say, today we are aware. You know already the president this morning. He's telling us for two years, what about urban ministry? How can you think because I come from the South. Most pastors in the South, very few of them come to the middle class. Most of them from poor. If you put them in the urban, their thinking is still in the rural, but they are now in the urban. The mind takes a long time to adjust. That's, that's what I found in, in my research. Now, here. The ordained ministers alone are not equal to the task of warning great cities. You know really, how many pastors do we have in a city? Yeah, look at that. And so, God is calling not only upon ministers, but all of physicians, nurses, culture, Bible workers, and other consecrated laymen of varied talents who have the knowledge of the word of God and who know the power of his grace to consider the need of the unwarned cities. Time is rapidly passing and in as much to be done. Every agency must be set in operation that present opportunity may be wisely improved. Now, my, major, my minor is mission. And I know that from mission, you can only bridge people with the same thinking, with the same worldview. If you want to reach the wealthy, do not get a layman. Because the layman, the rich will look, oh, he's trying to get money. But if you use the wealthy, both of them are wealthy people witnessing the other, the bridge is already connected. This is what Ellen White is saying. Physician can easily reach physician. Wealthy can easily be reached by the wealthy people. Right? You find this driver of motorcycle. All of them can be evangelized by a fellow driver. Why? The same language, the same worldview, the same thinking. Right? But if you go to Hindre C, what do you will think of you? So here again, let's go back because this is what uh, missions are saying. So here Ellen White says, in every large city, there should be a core of organized, well-disciplined workers. Not mere one or two, but scores should be set to work. But the perplexing question is yet unsolved. How they will be sustained? Okay, they were challenging at the time. More attention should be given to training, educating, missionary with a special reference to work of the city. Meaning to say, a specialty really is needed in the context of the city that they were assigned. 
Okay? Uh, in the context of the city where they are assigned, because every city have different own cultural context settings and even uh, religious settings. Now, here, Ellen White says, its company of workers should under the direction of a competent leader. Now, I have studied the New Testament. Paul is a very good coach. He has 120 members of his team. If you can follow that in my research. He has 120 members of his team. And he, as a coach, he trained them. He said, go to Africa, go to Asia, go to other parts of the world, and then follow it through. He was really a good coach. And here, when I look at that, even Ellen White says, the one who worked in the wealthy, he should concentrate only on the wealthy. Because all the others can easily be done. Right? This one, we need really competent leader. The problem really is greed and jealousy. As I look at in my research. Why? Other pastors, oh, uh -huh. yes, it's okay. He's just walking. But you know, if I have already there all possible strategy that will work. So here, and it should be able to keep before them that they are missionary in the highest sense of the term. So systematic labor, wisely conducted, would produce blessed result. So, if I'm a pastor in the city today, it was my dream before I retire, Pastor Amorous. Sorry to tell you that. Before, five years before I retire, I want to be a church pastor in the city. Because what I learn, I want to implement. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, well, really what I wanted. I've been a church pastor in Coronadal City, in Cotabato City, as well as in Kidapawan City. So I have been pastor in a big city, in a Muslim area in Mindanao. And so that's why I get the challenge of knowing why, right? Because this is what I found. You find that you read the New Testament. The poor people are only in Judea, Achaia, and book of James. They are very insignificant. Most of the converts of the early Christianity were in the higher echelon and in fact higher ranks. Very insignificant are the poor during that time. In fact, if you try to look at Jesus Christ, of his 12 disciples, five are rich people. Somebody challenged me. Pastor Riquilio of Central Philippines, he said, Pastor, I don't believe because Illinois is, I said, Sir, to tell you frankly, he was my teacher in college. I told him, you know, Peter, you are thinking that he was a mere pisser man. But if you read thoroughly who was Peter James, there are commercial terms that are used. They are mending their nets because they are partners. And the word partners in Greek is a commercial term, meaning that Peter, Andrew, James, and John were commercial fishermen supplying the province of Galilee of all fishes. That's why from Bethsaida, which means peace port, they moved to Capernaum, which is an international road where all people, north and southwest, passes there. If you look at archaeology, the house of Peter is bigger than this one, this building. This is probably two times. And can accommodate 180 people. He was really rich. But we are thinking of a fisherman of a little boat na isa doon, isa dito, sige, nagbubugsay ka. This wrong reading of scripture. And besides that, remember Levi Matthew? Is a tax collector. Wealthy men, tax collector is not like they are today. Tax collectors are buyer of taxes. If I'm the tax collector, for example, in Puting Kahoy, I will buy all the taxes of all people, I will pay it to Rome. Therefore, the tax collectors must be very wealthy. And then I can charge people three or four times because I paid to roam all the attacks of the entire community. That's the tax collector. 
Today we think, ah, tax collector, yung sa BIR, mali yun. That is not. That's why, when Levi Matthew was converted, he converted also, he brought many tax collectors to Jesus. It means to say that the first disciple of Jesus, some were very wealthy. Some were very wealthy. And we will see that later on. Okay? And so here, serious responsibility. Every city, there should be a city mission. Okay? We have done that. That would be training school for workers. We have not done that. The first part, we have done. The second part, we have not done. Many of our brethren must stand condemned in the sight of God because they have not done the very work that God would have them to do. If our brethren will use their God-given ability to warn cities, angels of God will surely go before them to make impression upon the hearts of the people whom they have labored. The Lord has many thousands who have never bowed to the knee of Baal. Let not our ministers and our physician fail nor discourage. Because if you look at the city, it seems that, but remember, just like Elijah says, I'm the only one, Lord. No! God has prepared already a lot of wealthy people. Okay? So, he says, we must do more than we have done to reach people of our cities. We are not to erect large buildings in cities, but over and over again, the light has given me that we should establish in all our cities small plants which shall be center of influence. The Lord has message for our cities that his messages are to proclaim in our camp meetings by public efforts and also publication. In addition to this, hygienic restaurants are to be established in the cities. By them, the message of temperance is to be proclaimed. I think Pastor Nadado's dissertation is that. Uh, city evangelism through SM, big malls, and you do a little restaurant food. That would really, that's from Illinois. And so, and since he said, arrange should be made to hold meetings in connection with our restaurants. Whenever possible, let a room be provided where patrons can be invited to lectures on the science of health and Christian temperance where they can receive instruction of the preparation of some wholesome food. And I think EUP also have done that through our food factory and the missions. I like that when all our mission and conferences, they have products that to tell us of our advocate advocacy, then we are following what Ellen White is telling us. Another important subject, in these meetings there should be prayer, singing, and talks, not only health and temperance topics, but also other appropriate Bible subjects. As the people are taught how to prepare, preserve physical health, many opportunities will be found to sow seeds of the gospel of the kingdom. You know that already today, that people are health conscious. Restaurant really that are best today, you know, people come. A lot of people. And Ellen White's principle is still applicable until today. And we need to follow that. Okay? She said, repeatedly the Lord instructed us that we are to work in cities from outpost centers. In these cities, we are to have house of worship as memorials for God. Several times, Ellen White used that expression, memorials for gods in cities. Okay? But institution for publication of our literature, for the healing of the sick, and for the training of workers are to be established outside the cities. Especially, it is important that our youth should be shielded from the temptation of the city life. Now, here, we have understand that before, you know already, EUP was transferred, POC, Transferred here because, oh, it is still mountain, but today we are in the city. Right? We have to understand the context today. So we need to understand, and then many people say, oh, let us flee from the city, let's stay in the mountain. Now even mountains today are cities. Mountain View College from Iligan, very near to Iligan, is Mindanao Mission Academy. Now transferred to Mountain View in Valencia, now under the city. Now we need to understand we need to look at the principle of what Ellen White is saying. But we are really doing that because our church school, Ellen White says, in fact, if you look at Saudi Arabia, uh, even Egypt, the best methods of winning people, look at our academy in Egypt. By the thousands, they convert 
through education and that's why this i think we are we are we are on with this okay so i have taken that from there now let's move on part two ellen white says paul preaching had its influence extended until it reached the very palace of the emperor why paul was really thinking of something greater so meaning to say paul understanding of his mission to reach is until the highest seat of government. Ellen White says, the result, you know, a great victory was won for the gospel for from the very household of the king, members were added to the church. So we have royal members in the early Christianity. Paul reached that there. It was not expected that Paul or the poor friendless prisoner would be able to gain attention of the wealthy titled classes of Roman citizens. Now, here sometimes you need to understand Ellen White context of the word poor. Paul was not really poor as we have understand. Why? He has a personal doctor, Dr. Luke, whom, according to Ellen White, he shared his income through tent making. Can you afford a medical doctor during at the time if you are poor? You need to understand what Ellen White is saying on the context. He says, poor in the world goods, but not in the way how. What, what happened to this? When we have internet, it will just. Okay? For as he worked in his trade, trade making, the apostle had access to a class of people that he could not otherwise have reached. Meaning to say, tent making, Paul was a commercial person, a commercial tent maker. Hindi yung nagagawa sa atin yung mga tent natin. You know, to buy materials for tent making during the time, there were a leader from animals. And bought that and processed and brought to the place where he was working. And that's why you found that Aquila and Priscilla, who was also businessmen, Found with Paul and through business, Paul reached those people on the top. But our problem, especially in the context in the Philippines, is wrong reading of scripture. Our greatest challenge is how to reach seemingly unreached affluent people. Besides that, the mindset is so difficult to handle when Jesus declared, As surely I said to you, it's hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Much more when Jesus say, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man. When we read this text, he said, forget the rich. Because our memory verse, blessed are the poor. <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the mindset of my church member that I found. Say, oh, Pastor, forget the rich people. They are already condemned. <laughs> Why? The memory verse is, blessed are the poor. Oh, so if you are not poor, you are not blessed. That's the thinking. But James, you rich weep and howl or your miseries are coming upon you. So this is enough to discourage people to reach the wealthy one because they have favorite texts. Blessed are the poor. But you need to look at what kind of poor. We need to ask always qualitative questions. Okay? When the stakes are read out of context, it's enough for our mission to the wealthy is over before it begins. Correct? The wealthy, according to White, this class has been sadly neglected. The workers have judged from appearance and have taken a certainty that they would labor in vain. This is what Ellen White understanding. They are really neglected. Why? Because they are already prejudged. In this work, many discouragement will be presented. Many heart sickening revelation will be made. Wealthy must be rich. Ellen White says, the servants of Christ should labor faithfully the rich men in our city as well as the poor and the lowly. What's that? There are many wealthy men who are susceptible to the influences and impression of the gospel message. They will reveal a living faith in the word of God and will use their entrusted means to, means to prepare the way of the Lord. In fact, I have a section in my research, the role of the wealthy, the unrich wealthy in finishing the gospel. Why? We need to understand that from the background of the Old Testament. 
Did you remember the three pagan kings? Cyrus, Darius, and Artaxerxes. Who, uh, they are pagan, but they are the one who financed God's work in Jerusalem to restore the palace. They provided manual labors and all other things. It was the people of God who worked, but these pagan people were the one who really, because they have their rule in God's way of doing mission. We need to understand that background. Uh, the problem is that most of our people also are both extremists. When politicians say, okay, we give you money. No, no, that is from a corrupt money. I remember what there was a time in the Jerry Conference where there was a wealthy man who donated a large sum of money and lands. And then the Jerry Conference let us refuse that because that is from pagan. And Ellen White went on the vision. Ellen White said, you should accept that because it is the Lord who make this pagan person rich so that you will go to him that he will understand his role as pagan in finishing God's work. It happened to me when in Davao, our Davao Sanitarium, we began, the, the government will give them uh, was the wang wang ambulance. And the people meet, no, 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 because that is from Swift State. Ano klaseng utak ito? It should be given to enrich them. And did you remember what happened in the GC? They reversed the decision and accept that. Why? Because here, listen to what Ellen White. We are reminded that the Lord desires that many men, many men, means wealthy, shall be converted and act as his helping hand in reaching others. Again, this is a tremendous challenge to minister. Let minister of the gospel take hold of these many men and bring them to the banquet of truth that Christ preferred for them. Ministers of Christ, Link yourself to this class. Seek to save the men of wealth. But this is not properly done. Again, look at here. White reminds that not only wealthy but also those belonging in the higher ranks of society are to be sought with tender affection and brotherly regard. This class has been too much neglected. It is the Lord's will that men in whom he trusted many talents should hear the truth in manner different from the way that had heard in the past. So we need innovations. Men in business, in position of trust, men with large inventive faculties, scientific insights, men of genius are among to be the first to hear the gospel call. This is what Elder Wilson in his dissertation. We need really to come to have a mindset to reach people because the poor is easy to reach. The wealthy need more planning, more discipline, more especially, and it takes a long time. One of our professors, Pastor Conejos, is Dr. Libato. This man challenges three wealthy people in Valencia City. And it took them two years to give Bible study and the rich man says, Pastor Libato, let me try if your God is really true. For six months, I will open my business on Sabbath and I want to put everything, all the income. And another six months, I will close whether you are true. And he did it. He found out it was three times his income when he closed it in Friday evening and Sabbath. The entire family went to Israel and baptized in Jordan. But it takes how many years? Why? And then Pastor Libato, oh, this man become an Adventist. Then find another rich man also become Adventist. And then following years, they went again to Israel and baptized in Jordan. Why? These are really, because we are really afraid to tell. Right? So here, what's that? Men in business. Not monkey business. <laughs> hmm? Men with inventive large faculty and scientific insight. Men of genius are to be among the first to hear the gospel. 
until we change our methods of karga hakot ng ating makikinig, there's nothing we can go progress. Let's change with that. Okay? Here, Ellen White says, had a very, very special concern for warning and conversion of wealthy people. She said, I had been shown that thousands of wealthy men have gone to the grave and warned because they had been judged by appearance and passed as hopeless subject. Okay? Again, she warned, the Lord would have ordered these things changed. We should not start in the grassroots. Let's start with the baliti and all the big ones there. But I said, it's a challenge. It's a challenge. Now, let judicious men enter the work. Men who as yet have done one thing in this line because it seemed forbidding and hopeless. It is a great and important work. God will endow men, that's the promise and assurance, with wisdom to undertake it. So those of you who are leaders in the field, if you have seen these talents that they are really very influential to theirs, then develop these young ministers. If I, were, if I were a leader, if I am the administrator, if I find one, I should not give him a pastor, pastoral work at church. He should do training with the rich people that are the members of the church. Because these are really uh, what we call that, Pastor Ramo, homogeneous unit. This part, the way how people are converted. Okay? So, look at this one. The following statement are our greatest challenge in the work on behalf of the wealthy. It's not easy to work, to accomplish without the Holy Spirit influence and power. It will be of no casual accident touch that this wealthy word loving, world worshiping soul will drawn to Christ. Decided effort must be put forth by men and women imbued with missionary spirit who will not fail or discourage. Because many people, because as Pastor Cornejo said this morning, many of us are really discouraged because there is an imposing baptism. To tell you frankly, probably, I do not know, but I told my, my, my mission president till there, I'll not be moved even there is no blanket, there is no in the end of the year, because in the year in the says, okay, here are the outstanding. 150 baptism, 200 baptism. Again, I stay on my own. What God gives me, I appreciate that, because they will stay longer rather than those exchanged with sardinas and tinapa. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's true, because I was in that mission. Because, you know already, when the president hammered, the president also hammered the church, the, the workers. And then if the workers can find, say, okay, they will tell the natives, okay, let's have swimming. Oh. So, don't about this one, and ito pa yung mga, mga, <laughs> sa, oh, pagkatapos, swimming kasi. Pag about this one, say, eh, swimming ito, di, lumang mo yung mga doon. Nakukuha pa sa video. So, how can you do that? I said, unless we have to act, really. These are our, it's not easy really. It's, we need a decided effort. Besides that, we have the Holy Spirit. God has already prepared. Tingnan natin, the Holy Tayo sa mga, sa may-ari ng Robinson. Who got them? The GIL. Look at Kibuloy. 90% of the millionaire in Dabao give to Kibuloy. Reason. Kibaloy tells his way of stewardship say, you rich men, God made you rich so that you can help the world. And if you go to Kibaloy's treasury house in there, in there, the airport, you will find a lot, a lot of money. And most of them, 90% of the rich people in the bank. That's why he can buy his own airplane. He can make his own garden of Eden. You know that already. He has a lot of television. Uh, all throughout. Reason? Because he told the rich people. His approach is, it is God who make you rich. 
because you have a role in the kingdom of God. And so people give. To us, blessed are the poor. <laughs> we need to have a balanced outreach. Max is said concerning the duty to the neglected poor. Should not some attention be given to the neglected rich? I think there's a balance. What we do is, if there is a bunch of lazy, massive poor, the poor and up to the middle class, there should be a balance to the rich people. Okay? Many look upon this class as hopeless and they do little to open the eyes of those blinded and dazed by a glitter of earthly glory have lost eternity out their reckoning. Thousands of wealthy men go to the grave and warm, but indifferent as they may appear, many among the rich are soul burden. When I look at all the positive things what Ellen White says, I said, Lord, why don't you call me? If I only give him a chance, but I think that's, not, that's, my, that's my role. I found out that my role is in the classroom. And so I, I encourage my, my student to, to try, really. Okay? Riches and worldly owner cannot satisfy the soul. This is the reason why. Many among the rich are longing for some divine assurance, some spiritual hope. Many long for something that will bring to an end the monotony of their aimless life. Many in official life feel the need of something which they do not have. Few among them go to church for they feel that they receive little benefit. The teaching they hear does not touch the heart. Shall we not make no special appeal to them? That's the challenge of Illinois. And the principle uh, continues. Right? And so what we need to do? Okay? These persons, wealthy ones, are stewards whom God has committed important truths. We should come to close to this class for I know that many of them are soul burdened and they long for something they know not what. There is a work to be done for the wealthy. Those who are stand high in the world of their education or calling are seldom addressed personally in regards to interest of the soul. Here, positive. Meaning to say, if I were to count 10 rich men, I know the Lord has prepared one or two or three. So I try to find ways of this. That's why I challenged my president. I said, Elder, just give me because at the time, you know, tennis is only for the rich people, not like today. So I told the president, give me a rocket and a BHS. Or, if I were you, many of your pastors are young, you go to the golf course. You know really where can you meet these people. Find where they are and make friends. But if our ministerial secretary will say, Oh, bawal yan. Hmm? Bawal yan. How can we finish the work? The work will finish us first. So here is the challenge. That's why it's one of the greatest because today world are really large cities. I remember the other year, Elder Wilson preached in Manila, right? Yeah, because after finishing his dissertation, about Ellen White, that we need really to reach the cities. All. And he responded to that. Okay? Look at this one. I just write two. The, word, the role of the worldly wealthy in the missions for God. What Ellen White said. Men of the world who have God-given powers of organization, which are needed in carrying forward of the work for the last days. Look at last days. Men are needed who can take the management of institution where industrial work carried on. Men who in our conferences can act as leaders and educators. God needs men who can look ahead and see the needs to be done. Men who can act as faithful financer. Men who will stand a solid rock to the principle. Meaning to say, we have to do a lot, a lot, a lot. Specialty in doing. God will move upon the hearts of manned men. When the Bible, the Bible alone is presented as the light of the world. The question has been asked. Why have you made specialty 
of laboring the lowest, the most debased class, passing by the men of discrimination and talents. There is a field ripe for harvest, and the Lord has means whereby this field shall be worked. There are men of large business capabilities who will accept the truth. In many testimonies, I have stated that wealthy men who have the Lord's money will be moved by the Spirit of God to open doors for the advancement of truth in a large cities. That's why ministers, I always, in my place where there's always evangelism, I go to rich people. I, ha I have a nice one African student in my, in South Philippines. When he do uh, harvesting gathering, he will go to the rich people and he will tell, give me 5,000. And they say, who are you? I say, you know, I'm a foreigner. I'm helping your people. You are not helping. Give me 5,000, 10,000. And this rich man give much. But I, oh, when we ask rich people, ah, 100 share is enough. This man said, no, 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 I can accept that. I can accept only 5,000 up. <laughs> and people give. This is a power. I have one student now working in southern Mindanao. This young man is used by God. His converts are all professional, judges, lawyers, because he said, Pastor, you are right in telling us these higher class people, when they understand the truth, they stay longer. But these low people, class people, once they don't have, the, they lost their needs, and then you cannot supply, they just simply backslide. We have today Pedro Casio. I hope one day I can invite him because this man has converted a lot of professionals. In my field school, even he's graduated, I'm going to get him. Rich the people. Those cannot be rich because other students go to the children of the Adventists, 12 years old, 9 years old, unbaptized. <laughs> and I said, no. No 12 years old. When I was, I, I was the, uh, in charge of the field school for 7 years, I don't really accept small children for baptism. Why? There are many big there, why not? And so I have to challenge. And in fact, if you ask, how many judges in the South has been converted by this man? How many lawyers? In fact, those sisters that later on, there's something happened in her brain, she was the one who converted that. How many priests he had converted? When he gave me a Bible study, he always think of higher class. But you know, he does not know English so much. Because he believed that his, the Holy Spirit is using him. And so what, what we need today is just like this one. When you are moved by the Holy Spirit that this is your thinking that you are for the elite evangelism, then do. If I were the leader administrator, I will separate him for that particular purpose. Particular purpose. I always look at my old student. I have my student, I told him, you are a good editor. So he study editing because not all are called to be editors. You are really expert as an editor. To be a pastor, anybody can be. If you are called, but this one, I say, you need to have specialized. This is what we need. And so here also. So here. Ellen White says, those who work in large cities are to reach a possible High ones of the world, even the ruling powers. Oh, was that telling uh, Pastor Conejos, uh, Barangay Captain? <laughs> Very difficult, right? But if you see my paper, I found that out. There's nothing in the New Testament that I have not looked at who are the wealthy. Really, the New Testament socioeconomic profile, all of them are there because why Paul was in the great centers of civilization. He reached first the top because those people what wrote to Christ on the top, they are easy, just all their men just go. That's why we have the word household. Household in Greek means if this word is attached to a person in the New Testament, that person is wealthy. For example, the, the uh, owner slave of Philemon, the household of Philemon, the household of Ipraprass. 
when you see this word, you will find that they are really rich people. And so, that's why Ellen White says, it should be reversed. We'll start from the top, down, not down. down. So here is what it means. So, in fact, she asked, where is your faith? Solicit donation from them. It's God's mean which you should be enlightening to the world. Pag nag-evangelistic meeting kayo, punta kayo sa mayaman, sir. Boss, we have evangelistic, we have God's work. What is your plan in helping? First time probably, they, 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 they don't mind it. But later on, when you report, they give more. Our problem is approach. That's what Ellen White says. Ellen White, I look at that in her writings, she had several approaches to this uh, uh, people. Okay? So, here. Nevertheless, she affirms that the Lord would move upon worldly men, even idolaters, to give their abundance for the support of the work. If we would approach them wisely and give them the opportunity of doing things which is their privilege to do. So, what that? Idolaters, worldly men. Their abundance. They're more than willing to give. Oh, I remember I went to Loma Linda. No, I went to, where is it? Uh, where White Memorial Hospital? Uh, Glendale. Oh, I saw. Three-story building donated by this boxer. Uh, who is this boxer? Uh, Golden Boy? Uh, there is De La Hoya. Why did La Hoya donated such exquisite building? Why his mother was hospitalized and has a background and they become very expert and become close to Adventists and they have, he has donated three or four story building in Glendale, California in our medical city. And so these are really testimonies that we need really to tell them. We have nothing to be afraid. If they give us, okay. If not, it's okay. Rather than not trying to, to approach them. And so this is what Ellen White is saying. What? Idolaters, worldly men, they will support. They will support. But was that wise? For it is the privilege of God's people to bring the men high places and give them a fair chance to receive and we evidence, invite them to the feast of Christ. God is converting strong men to wealth into our ranks. If they would prosper in Christian life, grow in grace, and at last reap the rich reward, they will have to use their abundance to the cause of truth. Many of these wealthy men, why it says, possess superior qualifications, and they have a means and influence. These are precious gifts entrusted to them by the Lord to be increased and used for the good of others, seek to save the men of wealth. So here is a big challenge to us from Ellen White. So we should concentrate more on the city. Right? I grew up in a mountain and it's a very difficult to tell you, frankly, I will never be lost in the mountain. 18 years old, first time I went into Davao City. I was lost. I said, what is this? How, what, what is I'm, what I'm going to do? Good that I have been just pastor for three large cities in Mindanao, but not like Manila. Manila is, to me, is so much. <laughs> really, to tell you frankly, it's so much. Let me tell you of one of my experience. A man was jogging along our church in Kota Kinabalu. And then I meet him. And then I, saw, I told him, I'm Pastor Hagen. I come from the south in Mindanao. I'm a teacher. I'm preparing young people for pastor. And then I told him, Sir, are you a member of this church? Because our church in Kota, Kota Kinabalu is big, so nice. And he said, No, I'm not an Adventist. He said, I'm the director of social affairs of this city. I said, oh, but why you're here? He said, well, I like your church. Because, look at the big church there in the forest. He said, when I turn this church, that forest, I saw the, the, the face of Isa. In the forest, he saw 
the face of Jesus Christ. And we have a big cross. It says, looking on the cross. When I turn every morning except Sabbath, your Jesus Isa is seeing me turning around your church. <laughs> I did not know that he was rich man. Then I told him, did you uh, try to enter to our church? He said, no, because your pastor did not responded to my invitation to invite, I invited him to go to my temple because I am the founder of the Chinese temple near the Chinese pagoda in Kota Kinabalu. And then I told him, sir, why don't you invite me? <laughs> you see, huh? you see how, uh, how I, 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 I move this, uh, take action. He said, okay, in two hours I'll get you, prepare your family because all of us are going to Kuala Lumpur, and then we go to Singapore. And then two hours he came with his car. And I told him, I'm a pastor. He said, yeah, I know you're a pastor. We have two Malaysian pastors here. Do, do not recognize me. Said, you see? Meaning to say, remember what Ellen White says. Come closer with other ministers. Right? Be friendly with other ministers, regardless of what they believe. And so we went to his temple, and he told me. So I went to his temple. Very nice. And you know already Buddhist has 30 million gods. <laughs> so he said, oh, you, we may have picture. So I got picture. And then I look, what happened to these gods? Why they are black? Why they are golden? And why? And I, said, I said, on the top, there is Jesus, Confucius, or there is Muhammad. He said, well, if, they, if the Buddhists like that, then they can have them. You, you have no alternatives. You have only one god. <laughs> And so, after that, I said, can I have a picture with your gods? He said, oh, our gods are okay, especially if you are a visitor. Why don't you take a picture with, your, uh, with my gods? And then he brought me to the Ta Taoist temple, I think, and he told me, you know, Pastor, the one who donated this one is a Chinese man. He died without really knowing how much money he had. <laughs> Very rich. He gave to all religion here. But he built this and the biggest one is in Kuala Lumpur. If you see that uh, Taoist temple. And then we brought to the top. I said, on the top, he said, this is our highest God here in Kota Kinabalu. <laughs> so it looked like heaven, all the beautiful. said, can I have a picture with your God? He said, yeah. So I have to picture with their gods. And then down, down, down with my children. And then in the entrance, there is a little room. I said, what is this? This is a district god if you need money. <laughs> I said, what shall I do? And my wife says, oh, our money is, uh, is not enough. And then the Chinese says, you go. Yeah, you, you do this one. Demonstrate it. Demonstrate it. <laughs> we become close friends. I just talked to him because he said, many Adventists does not talk to me. <laughs> I said, I'm fortunate that you talk to me. Every morning I have a newspaper, I have food. He brought it back to the, to the parsonage. We become close friends. And then, I get, before I leave, leave, I give him my Bible. It was given to me when I graduated my PhD in IAS. There's a PhD uh, gift. Then I give to him. I said, sir, have you seen the Bible? He said, no, never in my life. <laughs> so I said, I'm going to give it to you. And you know, after six months, he sent me a five-pages paper. He researched the Adventist work in Malaysia. And the first converts, he said, were all Chinese. And you will find Malaysia and Indonesia, Chinese are very responsive in the gospel. But here, what happened? I think the reason is that what Ellen White says, we are having a prejudgment. Uh, we cannot reach them because they are rich. So this is what Ellen White says. Let me end. This is our greatest challenge in the urban ministry, right? But what is our response? We try. Because God has already prepared really God has already prepared what we need is to find them. Is to find them. And so, 
We need really because you need to understand, so long as Dr. Gayuba is the president, he will keep on hammering theology. Produce urban minister, urban minister. We can produce urban driver of the band. Eh? But very difficult to produce urban minister. Hmm? Nissan urban. We can. Hmm? But what we really is, you know what? I believe what Ellen White says, over a thousand of scholars who are not inspired. That's my conviction. When Ellen White says there are thousands of rich men ready, and what we need is to find them, I believe that with all my heart, rather than what scholars are saying. That's my conviction. And so, that, that's the, 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 the way I understand. And so I hope that all our leaders open now to urban ministry. If you have seen gifted young people with this, train them. We are more than willing to help. We are more than willing to help so that there will be a change. Because Mountain View College, they are known already. Right? Yeah, I, I go, I went to the United States, went to Nevada. The Indians were rich by the Sulans. The other day, I called my friend who was my classmate in Canada. They reached also some natives there. Now, the dream of the president is urban ministry, not Nissan urban. Hmm? This is our dream. So, uh, and we like that. And do you think it is possible? Yes. The Lord will bless us. Thank you. Amen. Okay, we will just entertain two questions for you this afternoon. First one, sir. Uh, this is not something that uh, I would like to express my thanks. I actually attend this. This is not uh, in my schedule. Okay. I'm greatly blessed. And Amen. The dispensation for that mentality has been passed because that's really the mentality in the past. But I have also a recent experience. A key. For this kind of ministry is the, uh, when you reach a place, you make a policy call. And that is one of the problems that we miss. What are the factors that we miss when we enter a territory? This is a lesson for new workers. If ever you come to a territory, don't forget to make a policy call, the mayor, and the chief of police, the higher people. Because uh, I had experience when I had the gathering. I had a call to go to the governor. And then, when he, there was a gathering, uh, I had to ask for a permit. We wait for almost one hour. Hanggang yung governor ay napatingin sa akin. So I stood in raised my hands. And, oh, Pastor, ano bang tuliman natin? Oh, sir, you want to seek your permission to follow this uh, community. Oh, pagkano ba pinigil ako last year? Hinulaan ko lang. Sabi ko, parang 2,000. Okay, put the 5,000. So, siya na mismo nagbigay ng, ng uh, amount. Uh, that's one experience. In another experience, I made a courtesy call to the mayor. And then came the evangelism. I have to seek for the permit to tie the streamer. Two times, three times, I asked the secretary, could I have the time to see the mayor? Oh, he's busy. We have a session. Pangalawa, pangatlo. The third time, the mayor happened to look at me. Oh, kaway ako. Kasi may, may glass. I just wave my hands. Oh, pastor, ano ba problema natin? Mayor, we want to request for a uh, permit to tie a uh, streamer. Sure. Pastor, saan na kanina ka pa? Eh, kanina ka pa, ibinadaan-daan uh, ako. Many times, we are overestimating. Akala natin, very significant tayo. Pero, those people in the higher echelon, when we approach them personally, must they are humble. Sa general, when we have the general office, okay. the offices, they, the, the, the uh, boss, we made also a policy call. Nung, nung nag-ipag-policy call kami, mas mabait pala yung mga higher ang nag-ihintala nag, nag, yung mga situation. So, okay. 
the receptionist and those secretaries are the ones who bar us from meeting them. When we meet them, they are so humble. Okay. Thank you very much. Next question. Um, how can we reconcile the present position of our administration? They are looking for the numbers. And then, we as the pastors, we are bound to that idea that if we will not produce baptism, we are being a whole day probably. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Part, part of the promotion is the numbers. So how can we reconcile that? Because all of us, probably all of us know that that's uh, really the thing that we need to do. Yeah, yeah, so I know. How, how can we I have been in several missions and conferences. When you are not on fire, they will fire you out. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, I think administration now is changing. But it takes time because you need to understand the so-called generation. Uh, you need to understand. But today, I think slowly is moving towards direction. Because unless you are exposed to other countries, right? Other countries, it is the pastor who will give, this is my goal this year. Right? And I think is we are moving towards that. And the problem is that Philippines is the only Christian country in Asia. So dito talaga, so kinukuha lahat eh, here in the Philippines. But I think there's, because I have this, uh, how many president I have? I think three or four. But the newly, the especially the young ones now, my colleague is now on, on the mentality. Okay, you work. Because we have experienced that. I have a senior pastor in the work where, he cannot get his goal, so he went to cemetery, right? <laughs> Look at the tomb and write. <laughs> During workers' meeting, the president says, okay, pastor, how many baptisms? 150. Oh, now, next month, 100. Oh, you are must be a best pastor. So the, the president and the director went to his district. Where are the newly baptized? In there, for the last three years, we don't have baptism. But your pastor is all reporting 100, 150. He went to the other because he was an ordained pastor. So he has no supervising ministry. He went to another town. And where are the new believe baptized? Then they went to cemetery. They found all the names. <laughs> and he was out. I think that's the evil of goals. Just imagine a pastor. Eh, okay, you know, I think his mentality is a little more moon. Baptize the dead. Mm. <laughs> but to answer, we can. Today, our administrators are mm. changing. But yet, still Filipinos, we have that. Because if you will not push your goals, you don't work hard. Just like my student. I said, okay, research thesis. If you will not, then drop. Uh, but many of them, they say, you know, Pastor Hagen is, is merciful. <laughs> they say, sir, have mercy. See, secret, have mercy. <laughs> if they have done, okay, say, be merciful. Give, be. Uh, yes, Pastor, thank you. Okay, uh, we wish that uh, we'll give another time. But uh, Pastor Moro, you're the next one because the next uh, presenter is not around before... Uh, you present, we'll give another chance for that, uh, the one who raised his hand. Okay, sir. Just to gain foothold inside your air. 
and now we have a congregation there. But the problem is, 15,000 per month is the rental fee for the house. Operative. And now we are alone shouldering this much of money. Okay. And no personal. Yeah. They 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 give the but that's not that's the money of the sponsors. And that's not the money of the conferences. So I was asking for the fund to continue the program. And tomorrow I will be in this place at Bill Air. And surely they will ask me how could we sustain this ministry if the amount of ministry is 15,000 pesos per month. Okay, and that is very small. <laughs> <laughs> Starting, Pastor, you start to find these people in Bill Air that we are here in the Christian's presence. Uh, can you help us? Those who say yes, then keep on coming, asking. The problem with us is we bring only envelope, bring a sack so that, did you remember what the Bible says? When you come to the Lord, open your mouth big. <laughs> so we need really, uh, I'm a, a positive uh, thinker people. I don't uh, say, I, that's why here are my students, I told them, do not include God in your plan when they are small because that's a slap on his face. <laughs> kaya yun yan eh. Yung hindi nyo kaya, in this, the time you bring. Mm -hmm. Now, what I'm going, Pastor, I know your congregation, there are really gifts of knowing who are those. Your job as this sick pastor is to find these people because not all of us. I found that I have a student who can ask 15,000 in one Sabbath and the stewardship director, they are only given 1,000. <laughs> it's a matter of gift. We know who are those who know. Not all of us have this capacity. Not all of us. I think we need to find. So, we need to bring more and theology always good with neology in order to have all this result that we need. That's the only thing I can see for this time. Thank you.